letter U. No, V? Letter V, yes. Wow, and did you program these letters in? Mm -hmm. you, fly, you have to flash it in. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit enter on V. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. What's it doing now? It's making holes. Mm -hmm. And you would have to actually press space. Okay. You would Where's have to, space uh, there? I'm going to find it. Right, oh, right Just past A. Yeah, go ahead. You can press enter. Space, enter. Oh, yeah. You can press enter or space again. And it's feeding the paper through. Uh, let's see. Let's try doing a D. No, actually, um, to the paper is kind of moving up. So yeah, let's do a couple more spaces. Enter, enter. Uh, yeah. One more. Oh, one more, please. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And you can go through. Okay, so now, what letter do I have here? Alright, that's D. I'm gonna try D. Go ahead. Shubham, what is it using to punch the dots in the paper? Yeah, it's... What is it actually doing there? Uh, it's the pin that we got. So there's actually one pin... Yeah. ...that is moving around. Now, why don't we have to, we have to calibrate it with a number of degrees for each, for each cell? Or is that just what you do initially? Yeah, that's what we, we have to do for the mother code. Oh, oh, I see, yeah. I see. This is all done. We're doing that one again. Should we space it out? Uh, yeah, let's space it. You could try making that letter again. Yeah. Let's try E. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. Go for it. So that's the E. Yep. You feel it? Yeah, and it's, it's a little bit faint, so it could be much crisper than that. But mm, that, yes. that is perfect. That is a Braille E. Mm -hmm. You have exacted the spacing for Braille E. Yeah, sorry if it's a little faint. We, oh, we, no, could, no, no, we could try to make uh, the paper a little... Yeah. Yeah, so this is um, this is absolutely fascinating, mm -hmm. uh, Shubham. Right. What you've done here is uh, extraordinarily impressive um, and really demonstrates uh, what what is possible mm -hmm. if you think outside the box and don't just do a simple, you know, standard run-of-the-mill science experiment that's been done you know, 10,000 times, like, can you taste the difference between Coke and Pepsi? Right. Um, what you have here is a device that can be used by anyone, really, mm -hmm. uh, but mainly by parents to show their children how to read Braille. And the beauty of it is, and the true excitement of it is, they don't actually need to know Braille themselves to use such a device. Um, that is what is truly fantastic about it and that's why I think it could be um, a great way to really sell the, the technology and to promote the technology mm -hmm. as, a, as a device for parents or for blind people to label uh, mm -hmm. things so I'm a I, I'll just say this you know so that we're, we, we can document it um, I'm a, a totally blind uh, computational chemist about a year and a half away from my PhD so I've, I've done a lot of stuff with technology and I'll tell you, and I have used a lot of accessible technology, this is by far the most innovative because you've developed a three-dimensionary, uh, you know, a printer that moves around, a braille printer, a braille embosser that prints on a, on a nice roll of uh, basically receipt paper and using simply a, a Lego kit and a couple of parts from Home Depot that, that are very inexpensive. And the design here is absolutely brilliant. and shows your innovation and the fact that you're 12 years old putting this thing out for the public to use is absolutely remarkable. Thank you. Uh, let, me, let me also just tell you a few improvements that I think would be phenomenal to make. Grade 1 and Grade 2 Braille. Mm -hmm. So Grade 2 Braille is uh, actually what we call contracted Braille mm -hmm. where there's abbreviations. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do is you can code in, so, so you said you like math and science, right? Oh uh, yeah. So in a Braille cell, right, there's six dots. Mm -hmm. So if we think about the Braille cell, yeah. if we think about all the combinations, we can have all the dots up, right? We can right. have all the dots being depressed, mm -hmm. make a, six, a cell of six things. Mm -hmm. Or we can have none of the dots up, that would just make a space. Right. And we can have a bunch of different combinations where you have some dots up and not others. Mm -hmm. So the total number of combinations that we can make is 64. 64. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mathematically, if you have six dots, you can have 64 permutations, including the oh. permutations where they're all up and they're all down. So it would be great if, if Brago could do all 64 of those permutations, mm. because that would make the contracted Braille completely possible. 
So someone should be able to press the, a, a button on your screen, which is AR. And there's a sign, a braille sign, which is dots, you know braille, so I can describe this to you. Dots three and then four, five. That would make an AR sign. So if I was writing the word aardvark, I would type an A and then an AR sign and then a D and then a V and then another AR sign and then a K. Why did I pick aardvark? I don't know. <laughs> it's a, a random word. Yeah. So there are different contractions which make Braille shorter and easier to write because, as you know, the cell uh, size is larger in Braille than it is in print. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So uh, being able to shorten it is a great way to, way to go. And for parents to be able to do that for their children is, is also very important. The other thing to code in would be a number sign. A number sign is a... Uh, it's dots three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. and a number sign. It's really cool because a number sign followed by any letter mm -hmm. is just that number. Oh, so right. number You're sign AJ like, yeah. is number sign one zero, which would be ten. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. So those are easy fixes that would revolutionize even more what what Braga could do. Mm. Wow, that's... But I think it's phenomenal, and I'd be happy to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both working on it. Uh, develop methodologies to improve Brego and really make it super cutting edge. Mm -hmm. It's totally impressive. The other thing that we could do is we could program in so that when you're selecting letters uh, on the brick here, mm -hmm. so when you're selecting letters, there was just a voice that would say A, and I would know that I could hit enter on A, then I could go down to a space and hit enter on the space, such that a blind oh, person yes, could yes. actually braille himself. Now getting those letters, uh, getting the speech to do that, I don't think would be that difficult, but it would be uh, an area slightly outside my expertise, but I'm certain that with all the technology that is yeah. coming up in the Bay Area, right. we could very easily program in, um, you know, a, a text-to-speech mm -hmm. software uh, through really anyone in the Bay Area. Mm, wow. There's a company called NVDA, mm -hmm. which currently produces a free text-to-speech software. Oh wow! And that could be very easily uh, implemented and used by yeah, yeah. by you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, other impressive, very impressive features are the portability, uh, mm -hmm. the fact that it's battery operated, and you're using a, uh, a, you know, a brick, Lego brick, which is just a tiny little computer, and you can flash everything right into your, right into your memory, mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, which means to me that it would be very easy to flash in all the other abbreviations and symbols I was telling you about. Right. So that would be a, a huge improvement. Um, another improvement would be using a, a pin that would that would depress the paper a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I am truly struck by, well, really, the innovation of this device and your ability to so skillfully um, and humbly think about putting something like this together and putting it on paper at 12 years old. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant, and I, I tell you uh, with full conviction that you have a huge, bright, long future. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.